In our daily lives, we often take for granted the level of protection and security we enjoy that is provided by our local police department. But during a time of calamity that could be either short or long term, picking up the phone to dial 911 may not be an option. Do you have the proper tools to provide security for you and your family if no one can come to help? First, I want to thank Rain6 for providing firearm consultation for this video. Check out rain6.com online for firearms, training, and accessories. I'm going to break this video down into three parts. Number one, I'll talk about the criteria I use for deciding these five firearms in my top five list. I encourage you to listen to this section and not skip ahead to my top firearms because it will help you understand a great deal more why I choose the options I did and will help you when you're deciding on what firearms you should get. Number two, my personal top five prepper firearm selections. And number three, a brief discussion regarding the role of firearms in prepping as well as comments regarding training. So let's begin. The criteria I use when deciding which top firearms made it to my list are the following. Number one, reliability. Does this firearm have a proven track record? You'll notice in my list that many of the firearms are used around the world by both military and law enforcement and have a long history in service and a proven track record. Number two, availability. Is this a common firearm? Now this is important for getting parts. In a prolonged grid down scenario, if you need parts and you have a firearm that is rare, getting parts or ammo may be difficult. Also, finding aftermarket accessories and parts is even easier if you have a common firearm. Also, is the ammunition that it uses, is it common? This makes finding the ammunition much easier to acquire if it's a common round. Often when a firearm is common and plentiful, it helps drive down the price, which is our next point. Number three, affordability. Is this firearm reasonably priced? Now, this is a bit relative. Firearms in general are not cheap, but many of these firearms we're discussing are a little lower on the price range compared to many options, which can get a lot more expensive. For some of the firearms we'll discuss, I'll mention some more affordable alternatives for you to consider. And number four, capability. Do you have training or experience with this firearm? I've heard it said instead of buying a $2,300 rifle, instead buy an $800 firearm and get $1,500 worth of training. I believe that. Training is critical should you be in a stressful situation. It's easy to go to the range and just plink around, but if you're in a life or death situation and you have a malfunction or gun jam, would you even know how to work through the issue? So without further ado, let's jump into my top five prepper firearms. I'm going to start with number five and work down to my top pick. While working through each of these, I'll try to give you a little background, why I personally chose them, and on a few of these firearms, we'll discuss some more affordable alternatives. So here's number five on my list, a 22 caliber firearm. 22 caliber firearms are a popular choice among many preppers due to their relative affordability, low cost of ammunition, and the ability to take down small game, as well as a carrying capacity. A thousand rounds of 22 caliber can easily be packed. Now, the 22 caliber firearm that often comes up is the Ruger 1022, and it will set you back around $250. There's over about 5 million of these in circulation. They've been around in production since about 1964. The rifle is ideal for young or inexperienced shooters and just plinking around. It's built with a very simple construction, meaning that the average person can easily replace any part in the gun with nothing more than a screwdriver, a hex key, and some simple punches. If it's the only option you have, it can be used as a self-defense rifle. With a well-placed shot, it could get the job done. While people may complain that the 22 caliber isn't high-powered enough to be a true self-defense weapon, uh, if you take a shot to the dome with one of these, it might change your mind. So what are some affordable alternatives? A pellet gun is a pretty solid, affordable alternative. They're relatively inexpensive. You don't have to have a license to get one. I did a video on a particular uh, uh, pellet gun a while back. I'll provide a link in the description below and you can check out that a little more. Number four on my list is a long rifle. If you need to reach out long distances or take down a small game, this is a great option. You can get larger caliber either in bolt action or semi-automatic. And I went with the 308 because it's a very common round and it has great long distance capabilities and knockdown power. These rounds enable a trained marksman to reach out to distances in excess of a thousand yards. While a thousand yard shot may not be easy to do, it's possible with the correct training. And you also have the advantage of accuracy with this setup. For this option, I went with the Remington 700, which is chambered in a 308. The Remington 700 is a popular firearm used among police departments and is a foundation for military snipers and defensive marksman rifles. While these have a higher recoil, these tools are really more designed for reaching out than close quarter engagements. So I just picked up this Remington 700 and obviously as you can see it doesn't have an optic yet. But currently I've got my eye on the Vortex HST 6x24 which comes in at about around 650. Um, something I gotta save up for. It'll be a while. So what are some cheap alternatives? For those looking for a solid long range rifle and a cheap, 
there's it's really hard to uh, beat the Mosin Nagant. I used to have one of these for years and they're a lot of fun. They were used during World War II in the battlefield and uh, they have a very, very long history and in some places they're actually still used in countries like Afghanistan. Um, they're pretty rugged. They're not exactly the best firearm in the world. The quality is pretty low on the one I had, but coming in around $100 to $150, it's kind of hard to beat those. Number three on my list is a shotgun. These firearms are often used in close quarter engagements, but they can print three inch groups at 100 meters with slugs and are often touted as a great home defense firearm and are devastatingly powerful. They're a bit more forgiving than a standard rifle in relation to hitting a target, and with the right ammunition, you can avoid over penetration in your walls whenever you're shooting in your home. In addition, these can also be used for hunting. The two top strengths of the shotgun are power and versatility. There's different loads that you can use like birdshot or buckshot and slugs, and these are all great hunting and defense loads. For example, modern self-defense shot could be compared to sending multiple 9mm bullets at once with 1600 feet per second behind them, and that's pretty good stuff right there. Now I went with the Remington 870 12-gauge. Again, this is a model that has a long history dating back to the 50s with over 10 million in production since that time. In addition, these rifles have proven their effectiveness and reliability and are used by both the military and police around the world. These are extremely effective in stopping hostile targets and you can feed them a variety of types of 12 gauge ammunition. The 12 gauge round is very common and easy to purchase which makes it especially popular in their prepping community. Most have heard of the 12 gauge shotgun, but the 20 gauge shotgun can be very effective in stopping a would-be assailant as well and is great for someone with a smaller or lighter frame. So what are some cheap alternatives? Well the one that I often see when I'm doing research on 12 gauges is the Maverick 88. You might want to check it out. I'll provide a link in the description below if you want to watch some uh, reviews on that one. Number two on my list is a handgun. Handguns come in two primary flavors, revolvers and semi-automatic, and both have their pros and cons. I personally decided to go with a semi-automatic because it gives me more carrying capacity and I can reload a lot faster with a magazine, which enables me to get back on target quickly after reloading. In addition, there's less felt recoil combined with generally larger grips and no heavy double action trigger pull, which for self-defense firearms is all pluses to get multiple rounds on target quickly. One of the biggest advantages a handgun offers is that it can be carried on your person at all times. It's easy to conceal and easy to maneuver in tight spaces, which is great if you live in an urban environment. Now, before purchasing a handgun, be sure to try out several different models to make sure they all fit correctly in your hand. Many firearm ranges will allow you to rent a handgun and finding the one that fits correctly for you is important. I personally went with a Glock 19. With its drop dead simplicity and ability to go bang whenever you pull the trigger makes it a very popular go-to for law enforcement and some militaries. It requires little training to become proficient with this pistol and it has the advantage of being very popular making it easy to get parts and accessories. Due to its popularity being so common, gun shops typically have to compete with each other driving down the prices on these firearms. This particular pistol I ended up going with is the Glock 19. It uses the 9mm round which is a very common and you'll hear a lot of arguments online about which is the best ammunition, you know, 9mm, 40 cal, or 45. While this video will not go into all the differences between these uh, different rounds, the 9mm round is manageable to shoot and very effective. I put a lot of rounds through this particular platform and have had to learn how to deal with malfunctions along with learning how to reload it quickly. Do I think it's the best option out there for everyone? No, not necessarily, but the grip is a little larger than I would like, making changing a magazine quickly a little difficult as my thumb can't reach around the mag release without a little manipulation, but I found workarounds. Plus, I live in California and our options for pistols are being reduced every year, so I'm fortunate this time to at least have this option. A Glock will usually set you back around about 500 and there are cheaper options on the market as well. Now, number one on my list is a carbine. An AR-15 or M4 chambered in either the 223 or NATO 556 is one of America's most common and powerful semi-automatic rifles. They serve a variety of purposes for preppers, including self-defense and hunting, and they're extremely accurate up to about 300 meters, which is farther than you can even ID a target, unless it was obviously shooting at you. You can also reach out to 500 meters with a little training and 3x magnification. These firearms are easy to learn how to operate and have very minimum recoil, making it easy to stay on target firing multiple rounds, allowing faster follow-up shots with user fatigue being reduced. Now, the M16 is a military version of this rifle, and they've been issued a U.S. soldier since Vietnam, and they've evolved over the years to a very refined and accurate platform. The advantage of a carbine is that you can put a lot of rounds down range very quickly, and reloading can be done very quickly as well with the right training. They're quite the force multiplier. Like the Glock 19 mentioned above, the AR-15 is a common firearm in the United States, and as a result, it's easy to get parts, accessories, and ammunitions. 
In a situation where gun parts may become limited or scarce, it's very likely you'll be able to find gun parts for AR-15 platform, which to me is a huge bonus. Also, finding good training on this platform is easy with thousands of experienced veterans returning home and opening firearm training companies. The prices on these can range as low as the mid 500s up to several thousands of dollars. A solid entry level AR-15 is the Smith & Wesson MP15 Sport, which will set you back about $750. Now, a very popular alternative is, of course, the AK-47. This option is extremely popular with preppers because they're renowned for their reliability, even when neglected. Um, again, that's just one of those kind of personal preference things. All my training has been on the AR-15, and that's where I've put a lot of time in, uh, you know, spending a lot of time at the range with these things. But AK-47s, if you know what you're doing, they're pretty amazing weapons. So um, definitely look at that option if you're interested. Now, in my search for some cheap alternatives, the High Point 4095 carbine, which is a semi-automatic 40 cal, uh, that one came up a lot. I saw a lot of those online. I'll provide a link in the description below if you want to look at some of those options. But again, remember, cheaper is not always better. So here are some additional thoughts. Firearms should not take top priority in your preps. I mean, the reality is they're just a tool like any other thing that you need to buy whenever you're beginning to get into prepping. Um, a lot of times I see this in the prepper community, and there's almost an obsession at times with firearms and prioritizing them over things like food and water and you know medical supplies. You can begin to spend unbelievable amounts of money on firearms and ammunition. There are many other things when it comes to firearms that you need to prioritize. Start with getting one or two firearms and then focus on things like food, water, and medical gear. And once you have all these other priorities in place, swing back later when you have more money and build up an armory. And I cannot stress this enough, but get training. I've done training and it makes all the difference. And I'll provide a link in the description below to our sponsor, Ring 6, which offers firearm training. If you're in the Salt Lake City area, check them out. Be sure to tell them City Prepping sent you. If you're not able to afford training from a professional, which again, I highly, highly recommend, there are other alternatives. One of my favorite training videos I review periodically is the Magpul Dynamics Art of the Tactical Carbine. It's a great step-by-step -step tutorial outlining the mechanics of the standard AR-15, which I'll provide a link to in the description below. I hope this video gave you some things to consider whenever you're looking at different firearms that are on the market. There's a lot of them out there, and again, these ones that I've listed are all run through the filter of the things that we talked about at the beginning of the video. But again, go out there, try them out, see what works for you, and um, hopefully you'll find the right one. So, as always, be safe out there.